लाइक टू बिलीव कोई पेपर इजी या डिफिकल्ट नहीं होता या तो आता है या नहीं आता है सो द ग्रेट न्यूज इज दैट माई स्टूडेंट्स वर वेरी वेरी वेल प्रिपेयर एंड दे सीम टू हैव डन वेल लेट्स गो हैड एंड डिस्कस द सोल्यूशन एंड लेट्स फिगर आउट कि कुछ जो आंसर्स कंफ्यूजिंग है जो आंसर्स गलत है वो क्यों गलत है राइट सो विद मी आई हैव सेट ए ऑफ द सीडीएस एग्जाम लुक एट द फर्स्ट पोर्शन विच इज पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच सो ये बहुत स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन आए हैं इस बारी एंड थैंकफुली ऑब्वियसली द ऑप्शन वर ऑल्सो मच सिंपल इट वॉज वेरी इजी टू इलिमिनेट द इन करेक्ट और द अनसुटेबल रिस्पॉन्सेज द आर्टिस्ट प्रांस अराउंड द स्टेज सिंगिंग इंथ्यूजियास्टिकली दिस इज ऑब्वियसली एन एक्शन सो अ वर्ब नेक्स्ट पुट द फोक एंड नाइफ इन द कटलरी बॉक्स इट्स अ प्रेपोजिशन प्रेपोजिशन ऑफ प्लेस शी केम स्लोली अप द अप टू द मेन डोर नाउ her coming which is an action is described as slowly to aapko adverb chahiye matlab you need to pick the adverb which is a word that describes a verb or an action slowly and remember most ly not all most ly words are usually uh well adverbs okay oh no exclamation i am getting late for the function this is an interjection interjections hote hain wow oh oh no alas a l a s and followed by a post uh, followed by exclamation points next one they are all going to attend the function they is used in place of their nouns their names so it's a pronoun the sun shone shone is the past form of shine by the way the sun shone through the dull gray clouds so the clouds nouns are described as dull so we say this is an adjective adjectives are words that describe nouns principal is presiding over the meeting now over here very obviously is a preposition ye phrasal verb banta hai presiding over all right so let's move on to question number 6 which is the sun shone through the dull gray clouds now shone is the past form of shine right so shone through the dull gray clouds the clouds are nouns so what describes a noun an adjective describes a noun so there you go next the meeting the pres sorry the principal is presiding over the meeting so over is a preposition presiding over is a prepositional phrase cash machines permit people to withdraw money at any time again permit is a verb an action next the novel is loosely based on his childhood in england now again remember most ly words are adverbs here again this is describing a verb since children have so much homework to do their play time is very limited now play time is a noun playing is a verb so don't get confused come to fill in the blanks again pretty straightforward this time another version of the play based on the text was reenacted successfully now if they are saying another version see another version means that the first one or the previous one was not okay right so after the prosecution and eventual proscription proscription is prohibition that means to stop something from going forward so clearly the previous version was proscribed or prohibited and a new version then was enacted reenacted rather okay then come to the next one ravi remembers the year when there was a devastating flood devastating is again causing a lot of destruction very damaging right the other options clearly don't apply because salubrious means good for health beneficial what you also call salutary right and ameliorative means making something better or reducing the severity of something come to the 13th davis is not sure whether he should leave the forest guest house after dark again very straightforward next they behaved as responsible people do during the difficult situation now remember because it's they right they is plural so a plural subject will require a plural verb but yahan pe behave is not there and 
behaved is the only suitable option. Do not say behaves because that's a singular and the subject here clearly is plural. This is called subject verb agreement. I usually call subject verb agreement the golden rule of English. You'll find that a lot of questions here in this paper are based on it. Next, criminal law has taken strides. Now, taking strides is also a phrase. It's a saying, strides are steps, long steps. So when you, take your, when you say you're taking strides towards something, means you're proceeding or you're going forward or you're advancing towards something. So criminal law has taken long strides in facilitating access to justice for women by making various provisions. Then, many laws have been made to deal with the problems of offenses against women. Crimes hota to wo bhi theek tha, but obviously you cannot have two correct options. Criminals, of course, is not correct. And it's not terror against women, it is offenses or crimes against women. Come to the 17th. A person purchasing goods and services for commercial purposes will also not come under the purview of this act. Acts, rules, Laws, bills, they have purviews. That means scope. That means the extent to which a law or a bill is applicable. Question number 18. The emergence of a sovereign Indian nation was premised. Now, a premise is an idea on which something is based. You could say it's a supposition. It's an assumption. Or like we say, postulate. P-O-S-T-U-L-A-T-E. It's based on certain assumptions. To base something on a supposition. Next, in Manipur, the most important piece of literary work that continues to instill a sense of patriotism is Kongjom Parva. Please pardon my pronunciation. But instill something means to implant, to put deep within. Next, a person purchasing goods and services. Sorry, we've done this. Next, 20th question. Women's autobiographies in the post-independence period can be seen as evidence of their literary interest, which means that it serves as a reminder that women are interested in literature. Evidence is proof. Come to ordering of words in a sentence. This is not the S1, S6 rearrangement category. This was, again, very straightforward. Always remember a good hint is SVO, the subject, verb, and then object. So here, I like to use the numbering method or you can do whatever works. Start with R. While plays with mythological content, now mythological means related to mythology or related to something which is a myth of doubtful origin, right? So while plays with mythological content continue to be in vogue means fashionable, one could not overlook the diminishing religiosity which was gradually engulfing the society with its concomitant implication for the stage from the third decade of the 20th century. Again, straightforward, it could not have started with anything else. And remember in rearrangement questions or ordering of words, one sub part has to logically flow into the next. Next. This one, if you read it, was of the type of not only, but also. Yape, instead of only, they've used merely. So automatically, the sequence was understood, right? So you start with capitalism, for instance, is sometimes treated not merely as an economic system, but also. So immediately, you know that there was a link with... Sorry, one second. There was a link with Q. Right? So S Q P R. I usually always like to say that once you have the first two letters figured out, then go to the options and confirm your answer. Then the equality provisions in the constitution are not merely anti-discriminatory based on the assumption of neutrality. Now, remember, First, hame mil gaya. Okay. Second, hame mil gaya. So now you go to the options and see PR. PR se do options hai. So now your answer, now your job becomes to get to the answer by eliminating the incorrect response. So obviously, we cannot have S after R if you read it. So PRQS. 
Next. The pandemic year was a challenge for the university, but it took it in its stride. So taking something in your stride means overcoming difficulty and not getting bogged down by bogged down. It'll, we'll do this later. Not getting bogged down by hardship or a challenge, right? So the pandemic year was a challenge for the university, but it took it in its stride, pulling through enough innovations to ensure that the learning teaching process continued seamlessly. Now, obviously, all of us are also, you know, now used to studying on the online medium as well as an offline. So that in itself has been an innovation in education. The answer is, of course, SQRP. Look at the next one. The Dramatic Performances Act effectively marked the end of direct political activism. What little had been demonstrated in the Bengali public theater, although some plays continued to be proscribed again forbidden, proscribed at the slightest hint of any seditious uh, intent. Now, you've heard this word sedition a lot, uh, especially in, you know, cases where people make certain statements and then are labeled anti-national or, uh, you know, they have sentiments that go against a particular community, religion or the country itself. So you could also call seditious, uh, either seditious words, seditious actions, inflammatory or resistant towards the law, resisting the law, going against the law. The answer is, of course, QRSP. Next. A final problem is that the tendency towards moderation and compromise may mean that multi-party systems are so dominated by the political center that they are unable to offer clear ideological alternatives. Again, straightforward, QPSR. Then SQRP, look at this. The Criminal Justice Administration with all its favorable provisions for women, still is dependent on the observations of the rules of procedure and evidence by the implementing agencies even after an offense has been committed. 28 is the theater management appreciated the popularity of such themes and emphasized staging plays with similar contents to earn more revenues. Now, ideally, content should have worked in place of contents, but who are we to question UPSC? So the answer is QRSP. Next, PRSQ. The Supreme Court in its majesty and magnanimity. Now, magnanimous is a word you use uh, to represent somebody who's very generous, very giving. So again, we are saying that the Supreme Court is very generous, kind and giving. So the Supreme Court in its majesty and magnanimity has expounded, expounded means said, stated, put forth, set forth. And profoundly in its majesty, sorry, profoundly the semantic sweep of Article 21, meaning related to the meaning of Article 21, which deals with the right to life. PRSQ. Moving on to the 29th question. It's PRSQ. The Supreme Court in its majesty and magnanimity. Magnanimity comes from the word magnanimous, which means very generous giving. So we say that the uh, Supreme Court here is generous or is very kind. The Supreme Court in its majesty and magnanimity has expounded, which means stated or set forth profoundly, deeply, the semantic sweep of Article 21, which deals with the right to life. Semantics is to do with the meanings of words, right? So they've explained Article 21. Come to question number 30, QSRP. One of these is that in focusing on the legitimacy of a political regime or system of rule tells us little about the circumstances in which political authority is challenged as a result of unpopular policies or a discredited leader or government. Of uh, Isme, there wasn't a real clear cut beginning, but if you read all the options, P, Q, R, and S, if you read all the subparts, then it had to only begin with Q. 
finally come to idioms and phrases again. So I always uh, hope that my students get sentences with idioms and phrases because context is very important. Exact idiom ka meaning nahi pata hota. So you read the question, read the sentence, and you can arrive at the meaning. I always preferred to study physics and mathematics. Now choosing economics and literature for further studies is another kettle of fish. So it's a totally different matter, but also some that might come with a little bit of a challenge. But here, of course, the obvious answer is completely different matter. Next, Sitting on the fence. Now, sitting on the fence means you are neither side, neither here nor there, right? So you are undecided. You're somewhere in the middle. So he criticized the participants for sitting on the fence and not contributing in finalizing the report, not taking a decision. Next, he strained every nerve. This should have been a little straightforward. Strained every nerve to understand the discourse on philosophy. Tried very hard. When it comes to using technology, she is completely at sea. At sea means you're baffled, perplexed, puzzled, confused. You can say puzzled or even perplexed. All right. Next, the gift of the gab. The gift of the gab means somebody is a very glib or an eloquent speaker. All my students now know this word by heart and they know that isme eloq root hair, which relates to speech. So somebody who is able to speak confidently, do not get confused with read fluently. One speaks fluently. Okay. 36. This car belonged to Ravi, but recently it changed hands. That means it changed owners. Somebody else now owns it. 37. He turned down the new assignment. He felt that he already had too many irons in the fire. Irons in the fire means you have a lot going on already and cannot take on more work. So having multiple tasks to complete. All right, 38. Brain drain. Now, brain drain is an important topic to know and an important phrase to know because Kafi Bar uh, SSB may as a lecture at topic P, brain drain aachuka hai. Brain drain basically means that all the brains, all the intelligent people of a country, they study in one place, their higher studies are in one place, but then they find opportunities, job opportunities, or further study opportunities abroad. More likely, job prospects, good job prospects abroad. So all the, let's say, working professionals, all the um, all, all the professionals like doctors and engineers, etc. If they study here and then they find jobs abroad, that means they've used the resources of one country in order to study, in order to gain knowledge, but then they're contributing to the economy of another country. So we like to retain all the brain or all the brain power, all the intelligence, all the intellectuals, hopefully in our country. So brain drain means movement of professionals to another country for better prospects. It should be prospects, but again, UPSC ko hum kuch nahi bolenge. All right. I just need to take rest and then I'll be as right as rain. As right as rain means you'll be in good condition. You'll be in good working order. You'll be in a good mental and physical state. It's all Greek to me. Again, my students know this phrase really well. It's all Greek to me with is something that is completely that completely confuses me, confounds me, or something I don't understand. Again, spotting errors this time was pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm quite pleased with the paper this time. You should read the newspaper regularly to be updated, of course. Very simple with current affairs. Error in C. Next. Our grandparents will be visited by us this weekend. Guys, there is no error because this is only the passive form of the sentence. So if you take a sentence, we will visit our grandparents this weekend. Usko passive mein karoge, our grandparents will be visited by us this weekend. Okay, there you go. However, the task is far from done. According to me, it should be far from done, which means it is not yet complete or it is far away from being complete or successful. Uh, however, the task is far from done particularly in ensuring equity in the distribution of quality education. That means we're far away from giving equal opportunities or providing equity in the distribution of education. Error in A. Looking ahead, the university is expunging revenue generation. Expunging means striking off the record, completely removing. So it's not expunging. Perhaps it could be expanding revenue generation. I mean, this is how I would fix it. 
Looking ahead, the university is expanding revenue generation opportunities to add more facilities for students and staff. They can't get rid of what generates revenue. So error in B. If you're interested in applying for this job, your job, your application must be received. My students who've done modals and auxiliaries with me, they know this answer and they know the concept already. So must be received by Friday. Next, perhaps the biggest threat today is the impact of climate change on food systems and the livelihoods of poor farmers. Missing article, omission of article. Next, in such a volatile global environment, again, remember volatile, mercurial, quick changing, right? So in such a volatile global environment, it is heartening, pleasing, that India has demonstrated you have to maintain the tense. So error in C. Write an email to your friend expressing your regret at not being able to attend. You don't express your regret for doing something. You express your regret at not being able to do something. Error in C. A B, I'm sorry. Then migrating elephant herds appear like West Bengal. No, they don't look like. They appear to like. So my correction would be migrating elephant herds appear to like West Bengal so much that they spend more time here than in the neighboring states from where they cross over. So that means they seem to like West Bengal or prefer it. Next, trucked neatly under the pile of clothes. No, I think it could be tucked neatly or placed neatly under the pile of clothes. In the cupboard are the letters written by my mother to my father 30 years ago. So obvious error in A. Okay. This is not an error of spellings, remember. The spellings are right. These are all words. This is an error of a wrong uh, word being in the wrong place. Okay, in the wrong situation. Malapropism. All right. Synonyms. Ache thes, simple thes, bari, better than before. His views on the matter are utopian. Now, utopia is considered to be a perfect world. Also, a good phrase to know for it, utopia can also be called Shangri-La. Shangri-La is also an idealistic uh, view of a world or when we see a perfect society. Obviously, a perfect society doesn't exist except in fiction or literature. Okay. The shortage of funds will render nugatory the implementation of reform policies. Now, even if you don't know what this word means, look at the sentence. The shortage of funds, what will that do to the implementation of reform policies? Obviously, you will not be able to implement those reforms, right? So it will re render it ineffectual. That means not effective. He first convulsed and then collapsed on the floor. A convulsion is when you move, shake, trim, uh, tremble, shiver. So the option we marked here is shivered. 54. We must not become complacent about the progress of the technology. Now, complacent is in some cases used, um, you know, to be like when I say don't be complacent with your studies. So don't be satisfied with a lower level or a lower quality of operation. So here, when you say complacent, you are using contented, but not in a good way. You're not satisfied, you know, and pleased and blissful. No, you're satisfied with something being subpar, with something being at a lower level. 55, the employees rejected the derisory pay offer. Now in this particular question, I myself am a little... Uh, well, conflicted, as I would say, because derisory ka, <coughs> I'm sorry, derisory ka exact synonym is there, derogatory, derogatory, however you want to pronounce it. Now, that is usually for insulting or negative remarks. So here, since we cannot use derogatory for a pay offer, we would here pick inadequate. See, I always tell you you that the suitable word out of the given options has to be picked and you have to use it in the sense that it is trying to convey. 56. They successfully diffuse the situation. Also, remember, you diffuse bombs. So that means you're making something safer or better. Mitigated, mitigated, ameliorated, allayed, made better, abated. 
ओके मेरे स्टूडेंट्स हंस रहे होंगे अभी बिकॉज मैंने एक वर्ड लिस्ट उनके साथ इतनी बारी कराई है दैट आई एम नाउ दे आर एब्सोल्युटली दे नो दिस लाइक द बैक ऑफ देयर हैंड्स the business floundered during the pandemic now from the context you can understand that obviously the pandemic was not great for businesses so faced many problems his speeches were models of brevity last time also ek brevity ka question aaya tha and i had done this in class brevity is the soul of wit by shakespeare this is a very very good saying by shakespeare now this means that somebody who is witty will also be brief or concise or precise or exact in their speech so concision which means to be concise to be precise is your answer there's a shortness and exactness in brevity the word comes from brief he was too obtuse to understand the merits of the case obtuse is a stupid person so he was too dull to understand the pros or the merits of the case again in the 60th question uh again i would say see it the options don't really fit exactly but this is where our skill will lie in you know could, uh, well using the understanding of the words to fit the situation no one knew what transpired during the meeting now transpired normally means what occurred what happened what came about so i was earlier thinking it could be maybe exchanged like information was exchanged but emerged that means came up seemed the most suitable to me all right so ordering of sentences s1 s6 is bari uh, i would say except for one or two which were again a little confusing they were a little conflicting the rest were pretty straightforward i would say so the answers to 61 i'm not going to go over the thorough reading of it but i will tell you how i arrived at the answer remember s1 ko link karo with first with the first part p r s or q whatever you think it should begin with and then s6 should also have a link to the letter that you think it should end with so in this case s1 mutations are random changes to the base sequence of genes most genes do not cause cancer if they mutate okay so this is how automatically it begins because i have eliminated that it cannot begin with any of the others now to confirm my answer p and s6 should go well together this is why mutations in them so they are talking about mutations in something called oncogenes from oncology the study of cancer remember this is why mutations in them can result in uncontrolled cell division and therefore tumor formation several mutations must occur in the same cell for it to become a tumor cell so yes absolutely our answer is confirmed it should be rq sp come to question number 62 for most people writing is an everyday occurrence when computers have affected our lifestyles and work patterns this activity which activity writing is also not left out so automatically we know it begins with s of s say mere three options hai so it eliminates one again 25% probability se already 33.3% probability ho gayi hai of getting the right answer so i have thoroughly gone through read the options as i'm sure all of you have and according to me sqrt is the most appropriate now just to confirm my answer i will link p and sq A word processing software provides a general set of tools for entering, editing, and formatting text. Nearly all the document types that we use in our daily lives can be created in a word processor. So, absolutely linked together. Good. Come to question number sixty-three. Social networking is the grouping of individuals into specific groups, like small rural communities or a neighborhood subdivision, etc. Although social networking is possible in person. especially in the in universities high schools or in the workplace it is most popular online so they have introduced the concept of socializing uh, well in person versus online right so it begins with p now again agar aap p wale options dekhoge yahan pe bhi three hai right again after going through them p q r and s a straightforward sorry fourth a straightforward progression link s and s6 social networking websites function like an online community of internet users 
Depending on the social networking website, many of these online community members share a common interest such as hobbies, religion, or politics, right? So moving on to question number 64. The principles of enterprise capitalism have been extended far beyond the USA through the impact of economic globalization. This question would have required this. Well, I, I did multiple uh, reads, multiple takes of this question. And even though technically, I would say uh, there isn't a direct link in some of the parts. But again, the most cohesive option seemed to be RSPQ. So R se begin kia humne. Globalization has promoted marketization in a variety of ways. Then you go to governments reduce tax levels in the hope of attracting inward investment. That means getting people to spend money, inward investment. Then you go strong downward pressure has also been exerted on public spending and particularly welfare budgets. Ending with, moreover, the need to promote product and labor flexibility has often led to trade union activity. Such pressures have helped to shape what is sometimes called the new political economy. Now, I read pressures and I thought I saw pressures in P as well. And I figured maybe P could end it, but no option nahi tha. So out of the given options, the most suitable, again, like I say always, the most cohesive and logical, you have to pick RSPQ. This was pretty simple also and interesting. Traditional songs and music from the identity of the tribal, traditional songs and music form, the, sorry, the identity of the tribal culture. So you will, of course, start with, they reflect tribalses, again, tribalses, that means of all the tribes. They reflect tribalses, natural spirit, unconditional love and innate energy at every stage of their life. This is general and about most tribals, all tribals rather. And so this has to begin it. Then you begin with the tribal area of Chhattisgarh, always resonated with the sound of traditional tribal songs and music. Then after Q and P, Mera answer to automatically QPSR tha, but like I always say, confirm the answer once you arrive at an option. So the forest areas and tribal settlements of Chhattisgarh, I'm reading S, the forest areas and tribal settlements of Chhattisgarh began the revolt against the British at the very beginning of the freedom struggle, much before the urban areas. And then of course it leads into how initially the tribal songs in their dialects, whose dialects? The people of Chhattisgarh, the tribals of Chhattisgarh, reverberated with the rebellion of their area. Again, we've specified the people or the tribals of Chhattisgarh. So obviously the answer becomes QPSR. Come to question number 66. Uh, the social group wider than the family in the social structure of the Gond community is the clan. Then upon reading, it has to begin with S. The Gonds use the term Pari to express their group. Then according to my answer, it is SQPR. How will I confirm it? I take R and I read S6 together. The clan being patrilineal. Now understand lineage relates to your ancestry and patri relates to pater, which means father. So what we also known as a patriarchal society, patrilineal, right? The clan being patrilineal, a man passes on his clan name to his children. It is only the male who automatically takes the patronymic NYM from Latin, my students are laughing, I'm telling you. Uh, NYM, meaning name from Latin, we've done all of this in roots. So obviously much easier to understand. It is only the male who automatically takes the patronymic on birth, preserves it till death, and it is carried forward by his children. Our answer is confirmed SQPR. The equatorial zone is generally an area of abundant precipitation over 200 centimeters annually. So now you're looking for something that follows directly after this. It is R, this high level of precipitation. They mentioned the amount and they mentioned the area, right? So this high level of precipitation is due to the equatorial belt's high temperature, high humidity, and highly unstable air. Now, linking forward is S. Now, my answer ends with Q. So let me read Q and S6 together to confirm it. Over the land areas... Most of the precipitation occurs from the thunderstorms that are very frequent and active in the equatorial regions. It is to be noted that a large part of the precipitation in this region, which region? Remember, we've just spoken about it. Falls as heavy intermittent convective showers accompanied by thunder and lightning. Our answer is confirmed. 
come to 68. This time, ye bhi thode straightforward the. I felt like barring one or two, one could easily arrive at the answer. The period branded as the era of the Industrial Revolution was essentially a period of transformation. Look at Q. It marked the beginning of the final phase of the broader transformation from feudalism to capitalism, and capitalism made its presence felt all over Europe. So again, what marks the beginning? The Industrial Revolution. So now Q, there are only two options: fifty percent probability. So my answer is Q S P R. Let's read R and S six together. Actual production in the factories was done by the workers, but the workers had very little, and so for survival, they were required to continuously sell this labor power for wages. S six. This wage was, however, so automatically we see a link. Our answer is confirmed. Final two. Sixty nine. There exists a close relationship between meteorology and climatology. So you begin with meteorology, the physics of the lower atmosphere studies the individual phenomena of the atmosphere. See, we cannot begin with R because climatology, on the other hand, we cannot start with on the other hand. First, something has to be introduced. Then we contrast it by saying on the other hand, right? So my answer is S P R Q. Read Q and S six together. The function of climatology is twofold. First. the meteorological aspect of this discipline examines the process of gain and loss of heat energy by the air layer near the ground keeping in view the fact that the basic principles apply at any place on the globe second climatological aspect of the discipline examines the global pattern of thermal environment there you go answer is confirmed and last europe was going through a political social economic and cultural transformation in the 18th century this century saw far reaching changes automatically we know it begins with q that eliminates two of your other options 50% probability my answer is q s p r as most of you also got so let's read r and s6 together to just confirm however the treaty of paris could not bring peace to europe forever great britain emerged victorious in this in the contest for colonial supremacy in europe and from that moment Britain concentrated more on her colonial possessions, so there were wars, obviously, because Britain was colonizing well almost the entire world. There you go. Your answer is Q S P R. Finally, come to antonyms. Invincible. Invincible means something that cannot be defeated. Somebody or something that cannot be defeated, or you know something. In other words, ah, uh, you cannot, well, vanquish the power. or the strength of someone or something the obvious is of course vulnerable vulnerable means weak or capable of getting injured or wounded ye to science ka next next to science ka question hai very simple even primary school children will know this the opposite of condensation is of course evaporation next ushered ushered means led ushered means welcomed or directed so if somebody ushers you to your seat in a cinema hall or at a function or at a meeting so that means you are being led or directed so the opposite of course will be obstructed which means prohibited got in the way of prevented 74 the writer obfuscated the real issue with small details now obfuscated means either now the exact meaning of obfuscated means to darken so we can say darkened but when something becomes darker it is remember made unclear or vague made unclear or vague so the opposite of that of course is made clearer by illuminating shine a bright light on so illuminate it the horror and abomination abomination is a very very negative word abomination uh, deals with something that is hateful ugly uh, something that is extremely unpleasant the horror and abomination of the system of sati in india of course because sati pratha was an extremely abhorrent and a terrible practice was condemned condemned means criticized thoroughly so the obvious is obvious antonym is adoration which is a very positive word which means uh, to show love and devotion he was rebuked for his infraction of the discipline now infraction the word means to go against so not to follow or conform to the law or to the rules the obvious antonym is observance observance is obedience following the law 
77th, it is the general reaction of some people to denounce. Denounce means give up, renounce. Any new proposal by enthusiastic professionals, the opposite is to appreciate. 78. The emperor as a centralized entity indisputably went beyond regional conflicts and fostered. Foster actually means to either keep safe or to help grow, right? So if you say that uh, that family fostered three children that they had adopted. So they helped to raise them, grow them, keep them safe. So the opposite will, of course, be suppressed because the rest of them, if you notice, you can just arrive at the answer through the process of eliminating the other three responses. Come to question number 79. For the aspiring East India company that looked at every opportunity for expansion and self-aggrandizement. Now, remember, aggrand relates to grand, which means large, which means fabulous. So to self-aggrandize means to make yourself seem either much more superior or I would say uh, far more intellectual than you are or at a higher level than you might actually be. The opposite of that, of course, will be humility, which is to be humble, grounded. Question number 80. There was a combination of agrarian, agrarian related to agriculture. There was a combination of agrarian colonizing tendencies with the assertion. Assert means to put your point forward strongly. In SSBs and group discussions, they usually say be assertive, don't be aggressive. So assertive means that you are putting your point forth, but in a strong, confident way. The opposite, of course, is denial. Come to a good word. There's a good vocabulary word called averment. Averment means affirmation or positive declaration, to state something as true, to state something as a fact, to affirm. Okay, close comprehension, again, very straightforward. Objectives, ideology, programs, leadership, and organization are important components. Agar constituents, hota, that would have been a conflicting answer, but obviously you can't have two correct answers there. So components of social movements, they are interdependent, influencing each other. The objectives of the movement change from now. I always tell my students that if you don't know one particular blank for certain, aage chalo and read the next part of it because there might be a hint regarding the previous blank because the context thoda zada broaden ho jata hai. So you're able to figure out that previous blank mein kya aana chahiye, which is exactly what happened here. See, the objectives of the movement change from dash articular local issues to broad aims. So something changes from dash to broad, narrow to broad. Simple. Broad aims for social transformation. Sometimes a movement which begins with broad objectives may in the process get bogged down. Bogged down is a phrase which means to be overset with challenges, to be set, to be uh, beset with difficulty, hardship challenge. So if I say that um, the team was doing really well, but they were bogged down by the terrible weather and the fact that their captain fell sick at the last minute. So beset with difficulty or with challenges. Bogged down with one or two particular issues. Ideology also undergoes change. It is not static, it is dynamic. It provides direction for evolving. That means constantly changing. See, there will be hints throughout the little passage. You just have to be keen enough now and sensitive enough to pick up on those. It provides direction for evolving strategies and programs and also keeps the participants together by developing feelings of we-ness, togetherness. Various strategies and programs are evolved to mobilize the people. Mobilize means bring together. You usually use the word mobilize for resources. So human beings be aapke resources and they're human resources. They sustain the movement for a long period. That means help it survive. Leadership which initiates or emerges in the course of the growth of the movement plays a crucial role in articulating ideology. Articulating means put in the best possible words. Articulating ideology and objectives, evolving strategies and programs, and maintaining the spirit of the participant. Prepositions. Sorry, it's a little unclear. This was the copy that was available. He persevered in spite of uh, difficulties. Persevered means that he stayed along his path with determination. Next, he walked slowly because of his bandaged leg. Very simple. He accepted the car in lieu of, in lieu of means in exchange of, in lieu of his claim for 50,000 rupees. Next, 
I'll phone you sometime in the afternoon. Again, very, very simple. He raised several questions concerning the future of the organization. He was concerned with Ho Sakta Tha, but when you say he raised questions for the future as well, so it will be concerning. That means also worried about things to come. He's the gentleman whose name is written on the board. Pretty straightforward. 97. On account of his negligence. On account means that it is because of or due to. On account of his negligence, the company suffered a heavy loss. 98. Notwithstanding the resistance. Uh, when we did prepositions in the class, ye notes maine and I'm glad I did because there were a few phrases which have been used, which have come in this particular paper that I'm very happy to see. And um, this is one of them, notwithstanding means in spite of. So notwithstanding the resistance offered by the culprit, he was arrested by the police. The others don't make sense. They don't apply. 99. As a consequence of his illness, again means due to, because of, consequence is a result. As a consequence of his illness, he could not finish the work on time. Next. By means of rope ladders, they scaled the wall. By means of means with the help of, through. Completion of sentence, sentences. He is diligent. Diligent class may Assiduous. We've done this plenty of times. So he's diligent. Therefore, he will succeed. 102. A bomb went off in the city center, but fortunately, nobody was hurt. It can only be fortunate if there was no loss of life. Each of the scholars, now, this is where I mean subject verb agreement, is a golden rule. Because see, Subjects beginning with each, every, either, neither, none, many, a, uh, they're all singular. And they should all be followed by singular verbs. Singular verbs are S and ES. Wale. Is, was, has, eats, reads, studies. So each of the scholars has done well. Now this is a very, very common mistake, but also very easy to avoid if you know this particular rule, one rule, subject verb agreement. Okay. 104. He asked whether either of the brothers, now see again, subject verb agreement. This is why I always strengthen this concept. He asked whether either of the brothers was at home, not were. Either means one or the other, taken one at a time, singular subject. Next, one cannot be too careful of one's good name. This is also a very popular saying. You have to take risk. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. With great risk comes great reward. 106. The applicant is the native of this country, so he has the right to vote. 107. No sooner had he returned. We've done this in conjunctions, guys. No sooner had he returned than he was off again. Now, whatever starts with no sooner did, no sooner had. In the second part of the sentence, you must have a T-H-A-N, a than, right? So, this category in phrases that this is something we do in conjunctions. Fortunately, the news wasn't as bad as we expected. Simple. Next. When I was on holiday, all my luggage was stolen. The other parts are grammatically absolutely incorrect. So obviously not options. Next. I got up very early. So you're looking for a contrasting situation here. But Jack got up even earlier. Much before Vala is not appropriate. This is the most accurate here for some of you who may have marked that. Finally, come to comprehension. I know that the first comprehension was a little bit tricky. But remember, they cannot ask questions where, you know, there is no context to them. Thoda sa 111 mein tricky laga hoga, thoda mushkil laga hoga in order to understand. But remember, I'll show you how we've arrived at these answers. What is the writer's idea of truth in the Paragraph. Now see, what does the writer say? The writer says that men, yes, they tell the truth. People are always 
here also he said that people are always questioning the Grecians and many thinkers have questioned what is truth what uh, they've always wondered what truth is but there is a very innate or an inborn uh, tendency to also lie because men love lies right it gives them pleasure on some level to lie there is that little bit of thrill that comes so what is the writer's idea of truth that of course there is the truth but there are also lies and men lie just because they love it. They love they lie for the sake of lying, right? So truth can be told and avoided conveniently. Avoided how? By lying. Why do men love lies? Again, see here, this, um, there you go. In the middle of, I'm, I'm underlining it, in the middle of the passage, it'll say, but it is not only the difficulty and labor which men take in finding out of truth, nor again, that when it is found, it imposeth, imposeth as in imposes, is a slightly old fashioned way of saying, imposes upon man's thoughts that doth bring lies, doth means does, that, that does bring lies in favor, but a natural though corrupt love of the lie itself. It's a natural love. It's a corrupt love, but it's a natural love. So why do men love lies? For the love of lying. Okay, then. Which metaphor is used? Now, metaphor is something that is given as a symbolic example, right? Which metaphor is used in the passage to compare the value of truths and lies? Pearls versus diamonds. Very, very plain to see. Kuch to bhoti obvious answers there. Which literary device does the author use when he says truth is naked? Now, let's go over them one by one. Vaise answer personification hai. Personification is where an, a non-living or an inanimate, inanimate non-living thing is given the qualities of living beings, of human beings. So when you say truth is naked, Truth is an abstract noun. It's a feeling. It's a thought. Truth is um, not a person. Only people can be really naked, right? They understand the concept of naked or nudity. So here, truth is personified. But let's look at why symbolism is not an answer. Symbolism means that uh, a symbol represents an idea, an abstract idea. So obviously. Allegory is an example. Allegories are sometimes uh, those stories or examples that have spiritual or religious morals at the end and a paradox a paradox is something which is an example of a contrast a contradiction in itself so when you say less is more it's a paradox or if you say this is the beginning of the end it's a paradox that means the two um, concepts are in contrast to each other so obviously personification is the answer 115 what would happen if truths were not mixed with lies this is your last line there see Life would be full of melancholy and indisposition. People would find that they are not pleased, they are not happy, that they are almost hollow shells. So there would be there would not be any pleasure in the pursuit of truth. I hope that cleared it up a little bit. Passage two was more straightforward, easier than the first one for sure. According to the author, legal literacy, now they talk about legal literacy, meaning understanding the rules of the land and understanding what is constitutional. That means what is uh, what the law says in your land, but also the law of society, the law of community, the law of where you live. Certain things are okay to do in Western countries, but not okay in India. So that is something that comes under customary law, right? So true literacy is that you understand that there is a combination of both things that are not opposite to each other, but that should go together. Understanding the law, understanding the legality of, where, of the things that you say and do where you live, and also understanding whether those things are okay to do based on the community or based on the religious context, the societal context, etc. So 116, the answer is obviously A. 117, as a citizen, one is supposed to, again, see, make a balance between the legal aspects and cultural existence, obvious. 118, the above passage deals in legal literacy. But if you had to summarize and you have to say that what is the essence of the passage, of course, we talk about legal literacy and the need to establish it. Come to question number 119. According to the writer, diverse combinatory prowess, prowess is strength or, or you know, power. Means, see, 
you're taking two diverse things. Diverse means different, not opposite. And you're combining the strength of the two to form a really, really powerful entity. So a process of evolving a legal and constitutional system of cohesive elements, elements that go together, like the law and customs. 120, which among the following is closest in meaning to the word resistance? Resistance is rebellion. In other words, it is defiance. And with that, we are done discussing your paper. I hope this solved a lot of doubts. And I look forward to hearing from you. You can put in the comments or you can reach out to me. I really, really hope that you did well, better than you expected. So tally up your marks and all the very best to all of you.